Okay, hello. Um, this is going to be my first tutorial on Visual Studio 2013 and Visual Basic in general. Um, I've got this project which I'm going to use for the first few tutorials. Um, I'll try and host it online and put a download link for people to see and look at the coding. Pretty much I'll show you what this app does. The application will start in the middle of the screen. Um, because I've made it full, so from top to bottom I will hide the taskbar essentially this is, is a scoreboard so for the score you put in something like 34 54 you add the last game and this is meant to tally up a whole bunch of scores over a day of uh, events like a lightning carnival etc so if we enter a few more um, There we've got the total. Um, we've also got an undo button, which will undo the last two scores, which are still in the box. Um, so you can see that. Um, as you can see, there's a scores.txt box, which will show you matches as they are entered and what team one or team two scored. Um, I've also going to show you how to put in a logo like that. Um, I've got that logo for school event, which is the basketball marathon, and we just called it 2K14 like the games. Um, and I've also show you how to trigger message boxes from a button. So as you can see, it says, are you sure you want to exit, all data will be lost. Um, and this is actually a bit of a joke, because even if you, yes, it will say, well, if you really want to quit, you're going to have to force me. So, um, the easiest way to quit that is to this out. Alt F4. Okay, so, firstly, I'm going to show you how to move around Visual Studio. The easiest way to trigger an event for clicking on anything here is to find it, double-click it, and it'll create the sub for the button click and you put in there what you want to happen once the button is clicked. So as you can see, I've made um, a variable called the dialog result. Um, this variable is of, uh, is of a form of a message box result. So now that I've declared what it is, I said that the result equals the message box and then it has the buttons yes, no. So if the result equals the message boxes answer yes, then say if you really want to quit, you're going to have to force me. Else, if the answer is no, so they don't really want to quit, then show message box saying good choice and during both these times it will return back to the original page or the scoreboard so that's how you get into the coding for each button um, next video I'll show a bit more detailed about how these buttons work so for this button it um, it takes the score, so the recent score, and then the total score, which is scored as an item in a dictionary, and the total score always equals the item, add the recent score, and the recent score is the integer in the text box that's next to, 
So you're adding that plus the total score which is already there. Um, and once that's done, we're also telling it that the match number is increasing by one and to refresh the labels so that way the score on the screen updates. Um, just in general, dim is used to show a variable. So dim score as dictionary of string integer is telling the computer that you're making a variable score and that when you refer to score you're looking at a dictionary which is first value is a string and second value is an integer. Um, the string being the team name and the integer being the total score of the team. I've also set this up which is dim desktop as string. Um, desktop and the string is referring to the directory to anyone's desktop or whoever is using the application. Um, I'll show you why we need that. Um, and dim match is an integer. So match is the match number. So obviously down here when the form or the application loads, when it loads the first time, you're obviously starting with match one because you're not going to start with match three, four, or even match zero. Um, and it also tells you that the labels or their scores um, all equal zero at the beginning because you're going to want the form to start when everyone is at zero. Um, so in general with Visual Basic, you'll define the variable as what it is. So you'll either define it as a dictionary, string, integer, boolean, um, anything. And then later on when your form loads or a certain action happens, like a button is clicked or a button is pressed, that's when you'll tell it what the variable equals um, and if you really want you can get variables to equal other variables variables to equal itself add one such as we've done with the match once the score has been added we tell it that the match is what it was before plus one because the match has been played um, and when you do the undo button it's the match minus one so that way you're saying the last match actually wasn't right, go back one, and that's what the new match will equal. Um, so I'm at eight minutes, as you saw on the screen. Um, so next I'm going to go over quickly uh, what desktop was quickly, and I'll go over it. I'll go over this bit in detail and explain dictionaries um, as that is the main part. I'll explain that more in my next video. So essentially when we ran the program you saw the scores.txt. That's what the desktop string's about. Um, because you're not going to know every person who will use your app's uh, directory to the desktop because you're not going to know their username. Um, you can't just put in C users um, and then they use the name and then desktop. So we have desktop as a string and then we tell it that desktop, so the string, equals an environment and you're getting the folder path and then it's the environment special folder desktop and we refer to that string desktop down here when we run the computer file system write all text um, so I'll show you two examples so essentially if I put in my dot computer Uh, 
Uh, there we go. Um, and I'll say desktop plus backslash new dot text. Now I'll explain quickly what that bit means. So essentially this first bit is telling us we want to write um, that should change to that. It should be write all text. Um, so you're telling it to write all the text from somewhere to a new spot. So desktop will get the directory to the desktop and then you add on the backslash and the name of the text document which you want to create. Um, so if you don't have this bit, it's like you're telling the computer to put text straight onto the desktop, which won't work. You need to make sure you tell it the name of the file and also the type. Um, then you put a comma, and that's when you can put in the text you want it to say. So essentially, if I just want it to write, test this wrote a text file to desktop, um, and then you can hit write. Um, you put it, it'll put in a comma for you, so you can either say false or true. What false will do is it will overwrite the same line again and again and again. So if line one is full or the first spot's full, it will automatically write over it where if you put true like in the code i have before true means that it will go to the next available space and because i put in this environment dot new line that means it's automatically starting on the next spot on the next line and because it's true and it won't write over the line but above it automatically goes after the new line, meaning it'll put on a new line every time. So I'll show you how the false works. Um, I guess the best way to do this would be me if it copy this bit and then um, place it here and change the true value to false so that way you can see what's happening if I hit start now um, and I'll just put in 24 my mistake you have to add in a score for both times I'll show you the functions next video so as you can see here we should have two scores um, some reason didn't work um, that's fine if things don't work and I know why because I forgot to change the name of it which means it's just overriding it so I'll change that to schools I'll just change that to three dot text Quick enough. Um, so again just enter random numbers to test it And now you see we have two. So the one which has the new line and true, it goes to the new line. And then because it's not told to overwrite, it continues from where it stopped. And because it stopped at the beginning of a new line, it writes match one, two, three. And that match three is from before when we had three matches, but we were accidentally overriding it by using the same folder. Where this one is, that's what that last bit did. Match three, it doesn't show you match two or one because it's always overriding from the from the beginning of the text file. Um, so that's how you get to put something on someone's desktop. If you want them to have a text folder or something straight out of the application, 
then that's a good way to do it because you just tell them there'll be something on their desktop you want them to send them. Um, I've done that with people to test if an application can get some information from their computer quickly or test if an encryption program was working. I send that to them and say, put in a certain string um, and send that text file back to me. And if my decryptor works properly, I'll tell them what that string was. If it doesn't, then, well, I'll work on the program. So that's part one. Next part, I'll explain to you the dictionaries and as well as the if functions that work in this program. Um, and if you have any comments or um if you might want me to run this from the beginning and show you how I write out all the code step by step rather than just reviewing certain parts, let me know. Um, until then, I'll see you next time, guys.